Hello again, here we are at Union Station, and today I'm going to show you the cheapest way, essentially, I'll say that again, because we're right in the middle of downtown Toronto, but the cheapest way to get to Niagara Falls, or the only way, basically, on public transit. We're going to take the GO uh, train today, and then we're going to connect with a bus in Brampton, which will take us there. The overall trip is a little over two and a half hours, so it's a bit long. Uh, if you were to take it by car, it would be about uh, a little over an hour and a half straight there, depending on how fast you go. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit longer of a trip. There's just one change, uh, and then you get off to the various uh, unusual spots in Niagara Falls if you want. Uh, I'll show you the best spot to get off for the attractions, of which I'm going to be doing later today. So, uh, welcome to another travel vlog. It's been quite a long time, but one I've been trying to get to you for quite a while. And I'm sure it's very handy because, yeah, you're gonna get to see Niagara Falls from Toronto on a day trip. Okay, so this is the main ticket area for the GO train service. It's going to take us to Brampton. You want platform 26 to get you to your interchange point, which is where we're going to get the bus to take the next leg of our journey. But this is where you start. Now, uh, Union Station is kind of confusing because uh, it's been under construction. Uh, it's an inside joke in Toronto because it has been over 10 years that this project has been going on. But we're getting close to the end of it, as you can see with the shots uh, around here. Things are starting to look up. You can uh, get your ticket online or down there. As I mentioned, I do recommend getting the Presto card because it will be cheaper. It's about five bucks cheaper. Although I'll put the, uh, the numbers up on the screen right now. But yeah, it's uh, at least uh, it's about 17 bucks here to get one way. It's not cheap round trip to get there and back. And it's also a longer journey at two and a half hours. So yeah, it's not a uh, small undertaking. So when you're doing this, you do have to plan for your whole day. Uh, and I'll give you a summary of the times at the end uh, of the last times you can get back because it is not all day that you can take this service. So. Uh, you can take it early in the morning, like I'm taking it now, but uh, late at night, you are limited coming back as well. So yeah, enjoy the uh, trip, because here we go. So if you want to get a uh, drink or some food or something before you go into the trains, which are just on the other side over here, I don't know if you have no idea where you are right now, but uh, uh, let's just say the behind me is north ticket terminal where I just was is up there uh, and then you just go down to the trains. Once this place is actually fully opened up and not in construction anymore you won't have to actually uh, walk around this way that I'm about to go uh, just to through the old building but currently uh, if you want to get to the buses and the TTC you kind of have to go a long way but I believe in a couple months this whole area should be opening up really have an excuse. It's a Friday uh, just before, well it's Friday morning and this is what it looks like. like. This is usually like thousands of people down here and clearly it is not normal yet. So uh, there shouldn't be too many people on my train which uh, will probably be good in the situation at hand. Okay so we have a little bit of time so I think that the easiest way that we should do this is to just take you exactly where you need to go. So, as you can see, we're going inside the station. Uh, we're going to the main entrance. It's kind of a weird station because you can kind of get in numerous ways. Uh, but I do recommend if you are only here once or twice, uh, try to come in through the main entrance and go, you have to go down as we're going down right now. I'm just say these doors right here. And as you can see, they're over 100 years old or close to 100 years old. Um, it says push, but uh, it says push in French, but you got to pull. Maybe that's pull. No, that's not pull. Anyway, so as you can see, this area is 
really just stunning and I'm very happy that they didn't actually touch it. It still has its original deco feel and look. It's still very dark uh, as it always has been. This is how it's always looked since I was a kid. Um, yeah, it's really impressive down here. And you know, it's a big contrast upstairs as you've seen in another vlog. And I'll show you a quick shot there. I would say that this here pastry shop, the Danish pastry shop is one of the most popular spots in this concourse down here. There's a lot of hidden gems in this area of just the base of Union. Not only do they have the uh, traditional deco fronts to the stores, which is unique and very cool to check out, but uh, a lot of the stores down here are famous over the years for good and bad reasons. I won't go into that right now, but uh, yeah, all sorts of treats of various indulgences could you get down here, food related, but uh, back in the days they used to have some, uh, some dirtier coffee shops down here and stuff like that. Now we're going back to the go area where we're going to get our train. So as you break out here on the west side of the station, on the main floor, you're getting into the go train area. The buses are on the opposite side on the east. Then we're going to the train, obviously. So the train leaves uh, for Brampton currently. You want the Lakeshore West Line that's going to take you to Brampton. That is from platform 26, and it leaves at 43 minutes on the hour. So 10:43, 11:43, 12:43. That's the train you want. That's the service you want during regular, uh, just the peak times. Of service. I'll do a little update if that's any different. A little summary here as well for you of options for the weekend. The train that we are getting on is the next one to leave the station, but uh, yeah, they just made the call, so everyone's kind of making their way there now. So as I said, Presto car recommended because it's the cheapest fare and as you get on the train you're gonna, they have the units in advance that you can tap and then you just get on the train, you're good to go. Uh, if you're doing a different type of fare, let's say a uh, cash fare a ticket, which they're obviously going to issue you, then you're going to need to just get on the train and then they'll deal with you on the train there. Uh, Presto is the way to go because it is the most convenient, it's the easiest way to get onto the service, which we're about to do. So here we are, I'm gonna get myself organized. The train should be here in a second. I'm actually on the opposite platform, 27. It's easier, because that way, it's, uh, the train for the opposite direction comes on this platform, I believe. But we are going over here. Also, it tends to be a tendency that people board trains on the south on this, uh, in this particular station. So I recommend going to the north on the platform itself. So yes, shorter train, so we don't actually have that option today, which is fine. So uh, on a normal day, that's a good tip, but not today, so. Also, one of the best things about our train station now is that it's located right next to our
so we're about to get on the train and it's busy. So uh, this is actually probably the busiest line actually on uh, the GO Transit service. So I'm not surprised it is a Friday. Uh, midday you wouldn't really see that, but it is a big train, so we don't really have to worry too much about that. Uh, there's plenty of space, so I'm going to take my time, let these people get on, and I'll get on at the end. Not too concerned, we might a window seat. But, uh, here we go. Well, I'd say so far the service is getting zero marks. It's, it's not even the Doors didn't even open. So now we're trying to get on another car because all those people were stuck in the corner. It's a bit of a fiasco. <laughs> all right, so we're on another. Yeah, there's nobody on this train. But over on the next train, there's like 100 people trying to find a single seat. <laughs> there's nobody here. Huh? I'm call for the doors on platform 26. I don't know about that one. Wow. Oh, all right. So I guess if, if the train doors get stuck, get off the train, get in the next car. So I have the tip so far. Final call, final call for the doors on platform 26. Okay, and we have arrived. We're gonna get off the train because the train is leaving. We have arrived. It is Burlington. I may have said Brampton earlier, and I need to correct myself to make sure you don't go to Brampton, because that's a town that's not too far from here, but definitely off the beaten path if you're getting to Niagara. And uh, yeah, don't uh, wait around to get off the train. So here we go. We're gonna, I believe we have a bit of a wait here. About 15 minutes, 20 minutes before our connecting bus arrives. Then we can relax. It's a double decker bus as well, so it's pretty comfortable. At least it was last time I did this service. Uh, it's pretty smooth so far. There are trains on there too, or sorry, washrooms on there too. So if you need to uh, take care of business, you can do that too. See you in a sec. so big. I'm actually going to take an hour break. I'm going to take the next bus because uh, this is basically a full bus for the service right now. So uh, as a little bit of an insider tip, if you are taking this service, get to the front of the line. Otherwise, uh, take the next bus. 
And that's the update for now. So this is the Burlington bus train terminal. Uh, yeah, the, the line up behind me is for the Niagara line. And you'll see what I mean by there's just so many people waiting. Now, uh, it is uh, the weekend or the week leading into Labor Day, so people will be uh, kind of out and about trying to get uh, their last sort of kicks in before that happens. But uh, yeah, we're going to see whether or not there's going to be another bus. Because we're not going to be in a COVID situation getting on a full bus. That's kind of ridiculous. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, stay tuned. So here we go. We're getting on a bus. It's a little bit windy. The buses are split in two, so I'm getting on the one that's going to downtown probably can't hear you because of the wind, but uh, I don't know what the situation is in there, but uh, you're about to find out in a second. Alright, so we're inside, and uh, the nice situation is that you get to one seat in a row to yourself if you're on your own because that's the way it's going to have to be. So here we go. Okay, we're out, and uh, so there's a couple of things. Number one, main pointer when you're leaving, uh, or when you're arriving in Niagara Falls on this particular bus. Now, this was the express, and it's taking us straight to Niagara Falls downtown. And if you don't know what Niagara Falls downtown in Canada is, well, you can have a look around here because uh, this is the first thing you get to see. It is not exactly the most picturesque uh, environment, or at least this isn't really the honeymoon capital of the world you'd think when you get here. Uh, so you want to get off at Stanley, which is the first stop after you get off the highway. That's actually going to be right at the heart of Clifton Hill. If you get off here, you're going to be about 20, 25 minute walk before you get to Niagara. Secondly, I wouldn't recommend it, at least not during the pandemic, because as you've seen on the bus, uh, they are not honoring social distancing as far as the seating is concerned. They're filling the bus if they can, and they just don't seem to really care. I don't really understand for a service that when you're taking the train to Burlington and you have seat dividers with plexiglass to make sure that you're actually socially distanced from people, when you get on this bus, you're basically sat right next to someone without any uh, separation at all. It is a complete contradiction of terms. And I do not understand why it was allowed to happen. Uh, they do have two buses, and yes, it's a long weekend. It's a busy time of the year, but they're, uh, the Go Transit website is bragging about how they've taken the proper precautions in order to make sure that you can travel well in this situation. And I just don't think that they've done that. So uh, I'm gonna have to give a big thumbs down to the service from that standpoint. Outside of that, it was pretty comfortable. It was overrun with a lot of uh, families and stuff. A lot of people are just coming down here like myself for the day as a day trip, so it is that time of year, so I should expect it to be busy for what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. This is it. We're in Niagara Falls. There's other buses coming, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go into town. 
which if you're here, it's gonna be that way. Green District. But it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, if you head the opposite direction, you're basically going to be headed uh, down to Niagara-on-the-Lake. So I'm going to wrap it up for the day portion here. I'll do a little bit about the trip back because it's uh, going to come a little bit later and just to make sure you guys know where we're going because I'm probably going to pick up the bus at Stanley, as I mentioned. Uh, but this is the actual main terminal. Now we're going to go into town. We're going to do a couple vlogs for other things. We'll see you in a second. back on Stanley Avenue. I'm at Stanley and the Q, QEW 401. This is basically the main way that you get here. Uh, if you're coming down to the falls by car, but uh, on this intersection, which is where the, somewhere around here, there is a McDonald's on this intersection somewhere. It's hidden behind over there. So if you're at a McDonald's intersection, which is the only one around here, you're in the right spot. The bus stop is right over here, and that's where they're going to pick us up. It's 12 minutes after the hour is when the bus actually comes here. Uh, well, it actually leaves the GO terminal that I showed you earlier, and then comes here to pick you up. Probably about 5 minutes after 5.17 on the hour. Uh, the service does terminate at a certain point. I have not checked, but I'm going to flash it on the screen as I normally do for your convenience as far as the last times that you can capture this bus heading out of Niagara. Uh, it doesn't look like it's as busy uh, heading back as it was coming here, which is thankful for sure. I didn't even get to capture like a huge explosion on the bus on the way here, uh, which people were freaking out because there wasn't enough seats for them to get onto the bus. Or at least like they had, it was a family of five that came on and they just like created a huge scene. I wish I got it, but uh, not without its drama here in the Niagara Falls region. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna go home. I think I've had enough of the attractions for today. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you guys next time on another travel vlog. The next one's gonna be way further out. Uh, I'm not gonna say where it is right now, but it is in Canada, and it's gonna be another credit, hopefully. So until then, guys, stay tuned, have fun, keep safe, and enjoy the ride. So it's a wrap on the trip here. Uh, I'm gonna close it out now, officially. The thing I do need to mention though is that there is train service to Niagara on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday only, but we haven't actually been able to utilize that today. So if you are concerned, I'm gonna do a little bit of ear adjust there. Eh, whatever. It's good, yeah? You can take the train on the Saturday and Sunday. Probably a little bit better for spacing, etc. Or at least, let's hope so. So that's a wrap here, guys. Hopefully this was a bit of a help for you if you are planning on coming down and remember all those tips, of course. Uh, and yeah, hope you enjoyed the ride. Just one final note. I'm out of breath. The reason why that is is because you gotta tap your Presto 
get in the station. And as I was filming my outro, I hadn't tapped my card. I asked the conductor if they have one on the train, which they don't. The train was about to leave. I unfortunately used an expletive, not at her, as not why I was leaving. Turns out she held the train. I'm on the train. So at the end of the day, we're gonna give go another thumbs up. Because that is pretty good service. Can't fault them there.